I said, I'm Dave Swinney, uh, and I'll give the first part, and Javier will give the second part. So as we were talking about how to do this, uh, I'm going to talk, give you a, a little bit of a background and maybe oversimplification to everybody. I'm really going to start at ground zero, but, and then uh, in 45 minutes, uh, try to talk more about the, from the, a pharmacologist aspect, and then uh, Javier will come in and talk about more from the chemistry aspect. Okay, so I thought I'd start at uh, real early, and basically I'm going to try to talk about how, how to apply binding kinetics to drug discovery, uh, how you think about it, and how to think about it a little bit in the kinetic world, uh, not an equilibrium world. Uh, and I've been thinking about it for a long time, uh, but it, it's still not that easy to actually communicate that. But, but a lot of but it's it's... I guess the point I wanted to make with this slide is that uh, it's been understood, recognized for a long time. So this is a, a, just a statement that I got from uh, Terry Kinnikin's chapter on binding kinetics where, he's, where he quoted uh, Patton and Rang in 1966 saying it is clearly unsatisfactory to attempt to relate structure to action if highly relevant information about kinetics is ignored. And just to give... So, so this is in the 60s, and then in the 80s is when they first began formalizing binding kinetics. And there was really two, uh, two sort of camps that worked this. One was the uh, enzymes, uh, and this is where slow binding inhibition came on, and, and uh, Morrison uh, was really the, the person who was the, uh, wrote the first equations. I'll talk about that a little bit more, but that's where it really became formalized for, for enzymes, which is more about progress curves. And then in the receptor world, uh, it was receptor competition using uh, radio ligands to measure the assays. And there's a number of papers with, uh, with authors around uh, the 1980s there. Uh, Maltuski and Man Manin are, uh, is one of the papers that people use to uh, uh, refer to. So what are, molecular, what are binding kinetics? So I put this slide together to, in the next two slides to kind of demonstrate from a molecular perspective and also from, a, from more of a physiological perspective. And so from a molecular perspective, binding kinetics are simply binding and debinding. Uh, and from binding, you have association. We... You can have call the association many different things. It's called Ka for association, K on, K1. Uh, generally, it's second ordered. Units are concentration, uh, moles per second, and rates are concentration dependent. Uh, Debinding, dissociation, uh, Kd, K off, K minus two, sometimes K2 if it's a reverse. It's first order. Units are in time, reciprocal time, and. Uh, dissociation rates are concentration independent. Uh, it's also, people think about this in terms of half-life, and more recently, I think Bob Copeland brought forward the idea to think about it in terms of residence time. One thing I like to, this probably, you guys all know this, but rate constants are a lowercase k, while equilibrium constants are a capital K. So in terms of of a physiological perspective, and this is probably more where I come at it from. My background is a medicinal chemist, but I, I have a PhD in that, but I'm actually a, more of a pharmacologist. I was practicing, and that, I mean, that was what my job was for Roche for 20 years.